There are times when we are programming when we need a way for us to be able to say repeat certain statement or iterate through a dictionary values or an array or for that matter any data structure we may be using. And for that, that's when we use loop controls. So essentially, loop control allows us to repeat the execution of a code block a number of times. We do have a few loop control uh, we are going to be learning. The first one is the for loop, which is the most uh, used or common one. And the next one is the while loop. All right, so let, let's go ahead and fire up our Xcode and start coding. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. So file new playground project. You've done this a few times now. So I'm going to call this my for loop. Say next. And I'm going to close the previous one here because we don't need it. All right. I'm going to position myself here so you can actually see the entirety of the screen here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. So the first one is going to be for loop. So the for loop allows us to go through to repeat the execution of a certain statement. So how do we start? So we say for that's the keyword. And then we say var. In this case, we are initializing a var a variable, which we, in this case, we can call index. And we are initializing it to be at zero, say my colon, and then we say index is less then five, and then we increment it, we say plus plus index, and then we create this code block here with this curly braces there, let's print something out and see if this is actually true. So print time is let's go ahead and actually print our index here. So we're going to say index right away, it says here five times, this statement here is repeating five times. Now you see here it just says five times in order for us to actually see what exactly how many times it's repeating in terms of what is spitting out click on that all values you can see it's a time is zero time is one time is two time is three time is four. So this is what we intended for it to do because we wanted to go ahead and repeat the same execution. Meanwhile, the index is incremented. Okay, so let's go back and learn how to read this. So what are we doing here? We created our for loop here by saying for and then we have a variable we call index, we could have called anything else here, we could have said I or B or D, whatever we wanted. But in this case, we said index, and we saying index is at zero. So it starts at zero index is equal to zero. And we have this um, semicolon here we then which means we ending this statement here this var index is equal to zero. And then we say index is less than five. And then we increment what we're we saying here we are saying, Okay, we want to run this piece of code this code block here inside here where it says print time, we want to write it as long as our index is less than five. The first time this runs index is zero, zero index is indeed less than five. That's true. Therefore, it's going to put that zero here and increment one. So now index is one, it goes back and says, Okay, index is now one and goes and check index is equal to one. Is it less than five? Yes, one is less than five, we increment and then this runs again. And now this index is one and does this same thing until the index is five. Now here's what's going to happen when index is five, let's say index is five here, five is less than five. Is that true? No, it's not true. That's why it breaks. And that's the reason why let's go back here to the right and click on this. That is the reason why we don't see a five in here time is five it stops at four, because by the time it gets to five, it says, Well, this is not true. And then it breaks. That's the reason why we just this runs five times precisely, but doesn't show the five here because we start at zero, one, two, three, four, right. And if we wanted to change this, if we put six here, you notice right away, we have six times here. So we click on this little eye thing to the right and go up here. And we see indeed there is times zero, one through five. Because now when it gets to five index here, it's going to say five is less indeed than six. So iterate again and increment our index. So that's why you see the five here, as you can see to the right here. Okay, that's our for loop, we could have said, well, we want to display as long as index is less or equal to six. Look what happened now here, because our condition is a little bit different is less than or equal to six. So it's going to go seven times. 
That's why it goes through six again, because we are including the number six the sixth time. Now, going back to our statement here, we said that index, we are creating a variable called index is equal to zero, because we know that this statement here, var index is equal to zero. We've seen this before. We could also just take it away from our for inside of our for loop here and actually create it in outside here. So index is equal to zero. And then here, what we can do, we can just go and refer to index. This looks a little bit more elegant, but either way, it's the same thing, right? So what are we doing here? We're just uh, putting our index outside of our loop. So we, we are initializing it uh, before we start implementing it inside of our uh, inside of the for loop. Essentially the same thing, just a different way of organizing our code. So to summarize the general form of this loop format here, uh, we have a for. So this next thing we have after our for keyword is the initialization. This is where we are initializing things. Well, in this case, we went back and initialized our index outside, but this is essentially it's the same thing. So we have an initialization and then we have our semicolon to say this is just one statement. And we have inside here the condition after that, as you can see, the index is less than six. That's our condition because we're saying these are our conditions. This is what we want to happen. This is what is going to guide how many times this is going to run. And then last, we have our increment. So as we go through, we are incrementing our index and checking back to see if we have met that condition. If we haven't met, this will keep running. If we met the condition where this index is not less than six in this case, then we stop. So we have initialization, second we have condition, and finally we have increment. And of course, then inside we have the statements that we want to run. And of course, we can run as many statements as we want here. What if we wanted to go through an array and display all of the items from an array onto our screen? How would we do that? Let's create our array here. So let's say var my array again, it's gonna be an array of strings. You know how to do it this by now. iOS, Swift, Apple. All right, so we have our array here. In order for us to uh, iterate through or to go through this array and display iOS, Swift, and Apple in our console here in our logs, we can use a for loop, we we'll say for, and we initialize here, we're going to go, I'm going to go ahead and say var i for index is equal to zero, right? This is our initialization. And then I'm going to put the condition here, I'm going to say i is less, now pay attention here, is less than my array dot count. And notice really quick here, this count here, it says how many elements the array stores returns an integer, which is great, because that's what we need. So what I'm saying here, while I is less than the elements that this array stores, which is the count, then we want to increment. So plus plus I, and then we put our curly braces there. And inside here, what we want to do, we want to print so we can say print item is and of course, we are going to append concatenate here, we're going to say my array. And we're going to open square brackets there. And we are going to say I because we're passing in the index as it iterates. Let me show you something really neat here. If you look in our logs here, just go to the right where it has this I here, if you click on the far show result plus sign there here, click on that, look what's going to happen, it's going to show it here. And if you hover over, it's going to give you an option of just one item or a list of whatever it's being displayed. So now you can see here that it's running items is iOS, which is the first one item is Swift, second and third is Apple. All right, and then we can go ahead and close this down here by clicking there. Let's understand what's happening here. So we went ahead and create our my array, array of strings. So it has iOS, Swift, Apple. So once we have our array, we have our for loop here. So again, we went ahead and say var i because that's our index. So we just said i is equal to zero, we are initializing our for loop block, and then we have our condition. Now here, what we're saying is, we are checking to see if i is less than my array dot count, we could have just said, well, because we know our my array is size three, we could have just added three here instead of putting my array that count. 
Now, the reason why I didn't put three is that what if I wanted to change this to a different size? What if I added orange and other things inside of this array? Then I would have to come back here and change to four or five to make sure that as the same size as I put more stuff here in this array. Well, that is not very dynamic and it's not a good habit to have in programming, right? We want to make sure that when we write our programs, they can adjust to whatever conditions as conditions change. Okay, so that's what we're doing. And here, of course, we are incremented our I, our index. So it goes first time and second time until this condition here doesn't hold true and then it stops. Here, this is what's happening. We are going back and say my array, we're taking this my array again, and then we are passing in the I. So first time is going to go around, it's going to be zero. So my array index at zero. So this I is going to be zero here. It's going to go back and look at my array. Well, at zero index, guess what? We have iOS and item is iOS. That's what's going to show. The second time the I is one. So it goes back, says my array and passes in the one. And guess what? At index one, we have Swift and you see here it says item is Swift. The next way of iterating through an array using a for loop, we're going to use what's called a for in loop. Now this one is really slick because it's much compact. So how we do this one here, we go ahead and say for and the next thing we have in our for in loop we create a variable. In this case, we know we are iterating through my array. Let's just call this M array. And then we say in my array. Notice now this my array is what is this my array uh, that we have up here. And then we have our braces there. And we say print. And now here, what are we going to do? We're going to say the same thing. We say item is now notice what's going to happen here. Let's put a comma. And then we're going to go ahead and append. So backslash open parenthesis and close M array. What is this M array? Is this M array variable we created here? And let's take a look. So item is, let's make it more so it shows everything. So as you can see, it's the same thing that we had here, except it's just the syntax, right? So we are getting the same values because we haven't changed anything. It's just a different syntax. So we are still getting iOS, Swift, Apple, Orange. Close this here. Click there. This for in here loop is different from our previous for loop here. They call it traditional for loop. It's different in that all we had to do, we just have two items in our statement here. We have our initialization here, which essentially we're just initializing a variable, which will then hold whatever is coming from my array. So we are saying here, M array in my array. So inside of our code block here, what's going to happen, then we can just use this M array, this what we initialize here to iterate through my array. Very simple, right? Whereas here we had to go back and create my array that count and increment it. And then inside we had to go ahead and fetch the I, which is the index and then go through that. So these are the two for loops that you can use to iterate through an array. All right. And we'll see also how to iterate through a dictionary and so forth. I want you to go ahead and experiment a little bit more with this two kind of for loops so that you can start having a hang of it. So in the next video, we'll be learning about while loop and also how to iterate other data structures. All right. So I'll see you in the next video.